G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Well, <laughs> I really like this story. I thought this was really interesting. So there's a fund exec and he offers $1 million bet that Bitcoin's S2F model uh, won't come true. Uh, and it's not a bad bet. I put on Twitter just before, if I had a million dollars, I would take this bet. So we'll go and read a little bit. It's not as simple as that. So the S2F model predicts a Bitcoin price of up to $288,000 by 2022. But two fund execs are betting the model won't pan out. Now, Eric Wall, Chief Investment Officer of crypto hedge fund Arcane Assets, has offered a $1 million bet that the Bitcoin stock to flow model uh, will be proven false by before 2025. So there's another halving that has to come before then. So, yeah, th it's very interesting. If I had a million dollars, oh, I would be tempted to take that bet. Now, this is what we've got to read a little bit further to understand. In a November 12 tweet to his 32,700 followers, Wall laid out the terms of the wager, offering to pay $1 million to anyone who accepts his bet that the stock to flow or S2F model will be broken in less than five years. The CIO, the CIO stated the definition of a broken of broken is if the Bitcoin price hasn't reached even 50% of its target range. So he's saying it won't even make 144,000 within the next sort of six year, five years. That's the part that I would take on. I think Bitcoin has a good chance of reaching $144,000 within the next five years. Again, that's after another halving. Look, you know, again, it, it, it'd be a dangerous bet and, you know, you'd want to have millions of dollars. It wouldn't be just, you know, if I had $1 million, I would take it. But, uh, yeah, I think there's a good chance it might make 144000 But, look, it's a 50-50 bet, I suppose. It's, you know, as good a chance that it won't either. So, uh, interesting. Although he tagged S2F, uh, although he tagged in the S2F model creator Plan B, he later added, "This bet is not only uh, for uh, Plan B. If someone else has the money to lock up, I will take you on instead." So very, very interesting. And uh, you know, I don't know Plan B, uh, and I don't know how much money he has, but uh, considering he put uh, you know that model up there, I wonder if he'd be willing to put a bet on it. Uh, yeah, one hundred forty-four thousand. Uh, that, you know, the 288, I wouldn't be taking that bet, you know, I'm not sure Bitcoin can get to 288,000, although it's not impossible, and it is possible that this could be a, a super cycle, and I spoke about that in my last, uh, last video, you know, who knows what the price could be if it really is a super cycle, and, you know, big business and retail, you know, really get into it, into it. We have, you know, so much more uh, gateways to get into cryptocurrencies now and if banks start to custody it and all the rest of it and high net worth individuals get in you know I think it's definitely possible whether it's likely or not is a different story but I think it's possible that Bitcoin could go a lot higher than a hundred thousand you know maybe even more than 288,000 and start you know going into the realms of you know 400,000 maybe even half a million dollars but again, that's more on the unlikely side, but I think it's still within the realms of possibility that it could do that. You know, high net worth individuals and all that decide to get in. Yeah, I think the 144,000 part uh, is where I would be keen if I, you know, had a few million. And more, well, more if I had a million to spare, I'd probably go, you know what? I'll put a million bucks on that. I reckon it makes 144,000 before uh, 2025. So I thought that was a pretty interesting story. Now another one. This one, uh, that's more a bit of, you know, a bit of fun. This uh, is interesting. So institutional money is pumping the DeFi markets back up. Since making uh, its first investment in October, Polychain Capital now is now the 10th largest holder of the YFI coin. So that has really come back of late, and this is probably part uh, of the reason. Institutional money appears to be flowing into the decentralized finance sector, with Yearn Finance among the top beneficiaries. Beneficiaries, According to crypto dark data aggregator into the block, on-chain transactions of 100,000 or higher have increased by 282% over the past week, including nearly $134 million worth of activity on the 10th of November alone. So that was only two days ago. 
According to crypto market analysis firm Masari, YFI was the top performing DeFi asset of the past week, followed by Y-Axis with a 78% gain, Loopring with 50%, and Acropolis and Curve with 49% each. However, the DeFi turnaround is very recent, and only 11 of the 41 DeFi tokens tracked by Masari are up over the last 20 days, while 22 have posted price gains uh, for the last 12 months. So there was a, a number of movers uh, in the last week, uh, and yeah, Wi-Fi was probably the better performing of them. But again, Loopring did well, uh, Aave did well, Ren did pretty well, anything in the De DeFi space uh, generally did pretty well. Well, at least the good coins. Uh, I'm not so sure about the, you know, the not so... Uh, well documented coins you know the ones that don't have a lot of uh, you know they, they don't have public teams behind them and all the rest of it they're the ones that have to be careful with you know basically just yield farming coins that don't do anything else i don't think they did too well but a lot of the better known uh DeFi coins they re they really pump back and, and look they're having a bit of a retracement right now as we speak as well all right Another interesting story. So Bitcoin and crypto brace for a European Central Bank bombshell. I'm not really sure it's going to be a bombshell. Basically, this story is saying that uh, the European uh, Central Banks, uh, they're having a meeting uh, for the next two days and they're talking about uh, CBDCs. So central bank uh, uh, coins, you know, making their own uh, digital dollar. And, and that's all to do with China bringing out the digital yuan and, you know, Obviously, the U.S. looking into it, uh, and you know, uh, who was the first? I think it was somewhere in the Bahamas, was it? Uh, and they were the first to do it. They actually have a digital dollar, uh, so you know, I don't think there's going to be a bombshell. I'm pretty sure uh, Christine Lagarde and you know the whole European banking sector, they're going to get on board. Uh, it's coming whether people like it or not, uh, and it's been coming for a while. And I just think, uh, you know, in the next two days, they will make their plans, whether they release too much information to the public or not. Uh, and I think a, a euro digital dollar is not going to be too far away at all. I think it's going to, uh, news will come out at some stage, whether it's immediately after it or in the not too distant future, that, uh, you know, CBDCs, uh, they're here and Europe will have their own one. So I don't think th it's going to be a bombshell in any way, at least not in the bad sense that so all of a sudden Christine Lagarde says, yeah, there's going to be a central bank, you know, euro digital dollar, and all of a sudden crypto just tanks and, you know, does awfully. I don't think it'll be that kind of bombshell. I think it'll only uh, further push the narrative for cryptocurrencies and will probably just push the prices higher rather than anything else. More a bombshell for uh, people who didn't see it coming and never thought it was going to happen, that cash was here to stay. It'll be a bombshell for them. I don't think it's going to be a bombshell for the actual uh, digital currency space at all. Now, KuCoin, so they were hacked a little while ago. Seems they have recovered 84% of the stolen funds in the $280 million hack. So that's good for KuCoin and more so good for the people who are invested in KuCoin uh, and also the people who are invested in the coins that were stolen. But they didn't get all of it back. So the hackers uh, at the moment, while they might not have $280 million uh, worth of crypto anymore, they've still made a couple of million uh, dollars. Them, he, she, whatever they, them or that person may be. We further read on. KuCoin Chief Executive Johnny Liu, or, or Liu, I butchered that, no doubt, <laughs> revealed Wednesday that the exchange recovered 84, 84% or $235 million of the $280 million stolen in one of the crypto industry's uh, biggest hacks in September. So basically what it says here is that a lot of uh, exchanges got together and uh, USDC, USDT uh, and EOS all got together, tracked down where these funds were and basically blocked them and now have got them back. But in saying that, uh, the hackers uh, have got a, where is it? Uh, the th thieves have managed to cash out tokens worth nearly uh, $13 million, uh, which were laundered via decentralized protocols. Seven days ago, the hackers became active again using mixers to move ERC-20 tokens to another Ethereum address. So, you know, they might not have all the millions that they originally started with, but $13 million for basically, I'm going to say what's probably is a day or a month's work. Look, even if it's a, a year's worth of work, 13 million is not a bad payday for a year's worth of work. Now, the interesting thing is, yep, they've been able to siphon it off into mixes and all the rest of it, 
but will they eventually be tracked down due to the addresses and all the rest of it that they had with these other exchanges and with USDT and all that? It'll be interesting because I can tell you right now, for me, a $13 million score isn't worth, you know, a decade in jail. It's just not. I wouldn't do, uh, you know, a year in jail for a million dollars. <laughs> it's it's not enough. I, I would, yeah, I wouldn't have anything to do with it. And, you know, let's say it pays off. They would, you know, sorry, not let's say it pays off. Let's say that they did go to jail for a couple of years. Uh, they would be so uh, closely monitored when they got out that even if they had this money stashed somewhere, it'd be quite hard for them to uh, access it. So should they ever get caught, I don't think it'll be uh, worth it. And again, they've still got a couple of million dollars uh, other than this 13 million that they've already siphoned off uh, lying around somewhere. It's probably in these ERC20 tokens. But again, you know, they get caught at some stage and they do 10, 20 years in jail. I don't think it'll be worth it for a couple of million dollars. That's just my personal uh, uh my personal uh, comment on it, I, I wouldn't want to do a few years in jail uh, for a few million dollars, a, a decade in jail, I should say, for a couple of million dollars. Uh, I don't know if there is a price to do a decade in jail. That's such a long time. You know, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars, but then again, if the hundreds of millions of dollars were there, but you couldn't access it because you were being watched so closely, closely, then again, just completely not worth it. So good for KuCoin. I think there was a lot of Stellar that was stolen, I read somewhere in there. So, you know, good that the Stellar have basically been returned and, you know, it hasn't uh, affected their platform and the coins too much, at least in the long term. In the short term, I'm sure it did. All right, let's go here, CoinGecko. So 457 billion. So again, we're starting to creep up slowly but surely. Uh, BTC, it's just sitting around that 63% mark. I really did think it was going to hit 65%. I'm now starting to doubt that. You know, we'll have to wait and see. It, once it gets up close to around that $20,000 uh, mark, we'll have to see if the BTC dominance has risen up to 65 and again, maybe even 75%, or if this is as high as it gets. Maybe Bitcoin has hit its peak of 63%, and from here on in, it's just going to start to decline, and people are going to start to move more money uh, into the altcoins. Although, again, I think once Bitcoin hits around that $20,000 mark, it's probably going to go close to 75%, uh, if not above, for a brief while, because that'll be, you know, again, lots of people pouring in. But once people see a price of, you know, twenty thousand dollars for one coin there's going to be a lot of people that are just going to go but i can't you know let's say they've only got seven thousand dollars to invest and they go rightio i can buy a third of a bitcoin for seven thousand dollars you know they're going to feel like they don't and it's this mental perception i only have a third of something i don't i don't even have a whole of anything why would i want to put seven thousand dollars into something i can't even own a whole one and so they'll just start to look at other coins. That's human psychology right there. That is what they are going to do. So I see this BTC dominance, you know, could definitely go to 65% and above, maybe even 75%. And, you know, it might be around that $20,000 mark and even a little bit after once Bitcoin gets to about maybe twenty five to 35000 is when I think we're going to start to see some bigger pullbacks. Again, not these, you know, only minor kind of maybe 10% pullbacks. I think once Bitcoin reaches the twenty-five to $35,000 mark, we might start to see 15, 20, 30% retracements. But again, I could be wrong. And maybe again, BTC dominance is at its sort of peak right now. It's not going to go any higher. All right, what do we have in the way of gainers? The last 24 hours, what are we looking at? Block stack, nice. Uh, block stack's been performing really, really well. I'm happy with that. I have a... Uh, some block stack. Uh, Dash, nice to see them making a move. I don't have any Dash. I don't have any Decred. Uh, I don't really have anything of these kind of bigger movers. Uh, and, and that's all right. You know, what can you do? Cosmos, I have a bit of that. So I'm happy with that. I do have some Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, and Neo down there. So well done. Good to see they're moving. And I did see something, uh, I think it was from uh, altcoin buzz uh, about neo 3.0 uh, is not too far off i think they're about 90 percent of the way done and i was concerned that neo might have been a dead uh dead in the water kind of project but it sounds like they're still going and i know the chinese government uh has you know they are heavily looking into uh 
blockchain technology not so much cryptos itself but blockchain technology and i know neo uh, is something that they were looking at as well so good for them all right what about losers Ugh, synthetics network what can you do though I mean, they had a pretty good pump. They're up 50%. So, of course, they're going to have uh, some kind of pullback. I'm still in profit. I bought it $3 uh, and about $0.01. Cent, so, I'm still a dollar over uh, for that buy that I did. And, again, the majority of my uh, Synthetics Network portfolio was bought back at $0.84. Cents. So, uh, I'm well in profit in that. Yearn Finance, same thing. Of course, it was going to pull back. Uh, you know, I think it was 98% or something it was at. So it had doubled in, you know, nearly doubled in seven days. So of course they're going to pull back. Same with Loopring. Again, all of these, you know, projects that had really big moves. And Aave, there we go, 105%. So of course it's going to pull back in seven days. Uh, that is quite impressive for Aave. So, you know, still fairly uh, kind of minor pullbacks really. You know, 11%, that would be a lot in traditional finances. In cryptocurrencies, if it's not, you know, kind of 20 30%, it's nothing too bad. But look, over the next 24 hours, this could absolutely get worse. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I'd say it's probably going to level out somewhere around the $4 mark and it'll start to make its next move up again. But I could be wrong. Last but not least, let's go over to Bitcoin and have a look. So we can see we got this triangle, a bit of a wedge forming here. Now it did wick out above it, but pulled back down. Uh, and this triangle I do had covered all the wicks. So really, I could move this higher uh, to again encompass that uh, point there because it still reaches to up about there anyway. So let's do that. Let's start to move this uh, more to there. And now we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, whether we kept it the way it was before or, you know, we've slightly adjusted it now to encompass all of this. There's only a couple more days. This really gets us out to the 16th of November. It's the 12th now. In the next few days, we're going to know one way or the other what the trend is. Now, I have noticed something. This uh, is, you know, we had this good pump sort of from down here and now it's choppy. We had uh, a bit of a pump here got a bit choppy and retraced so this is this isn't the best one but this is more what i'm looking at could we be about to see a bart simpson type event and i did say that i thought we might see it again back here but it didn't do it it kept going higher so that was really really good but it's just something that we have to keep in uh, the back of our minds i don't think it's going to do that I think, again, there's too many people wanting to get into Bitcoin at the moment. I don't see any major retracements happening from Bitcoin until around about 25 to 35,000. 25 might even be a little bit low. That's just after it reaches its you know all-time high at 20,000. Once Bitcoin hits its old all-time high, which is, I think it's really only 19,700 or something like that, but we can just round it off to 20,000. I think there's gonna, that's where the FOMO will really start. Any businesses that hadn't got into Bitcoin uh, you know, prior are going to then get in, and particularly the retail, you know, once they start to hear about it, and they're not going to get too much attention to it at 20,000. It's more when Bitcoin hits, you know, kind of 40, 50,000, and particularly if it gets up to that $100,000 mark, when people hear Bitcoin is at those prices, and this is the you know the really inexperienced traders who are just suddenly going to hear something and think, oh, I've got to rush out and buy this. It's going to the moon. They won't understand that they've already missed it. But that is what will push it even higher. Now, whether Bitcoin gets to you know that hundred thousand dollar mark, I don't know. My sort of bare minimum is I'm thinking that Bitcoin's going to get to somewhere around sort of seventy to eighty thousand. That will be the minimum peak high for this bull run. The maximum peak high, I really can't pick it. It's just too hard. Again, you know, go back look at my video from yesterday. Uh, you know, if serious money really starts to pile in number one there's only about two million bitcoin that can be bought on the exchanges at the moment there's only about two and a half million bitcoin left to be mined so that's a total of four million bitcoin that can be purchased between now and 2021 2000 uh, 20 yeah 2000 uh Oh God, what is it? I don't even know how to say it. So at the moment, uh, it's 2020. So 2042, I think that's when the last Bitcoin can be mined. So there's only 4 million Bitcoin 
up until that date that can be purchased at the moment there's only two million bitcoin on uh, exchanges available so there's going to be you know high demand to try and buy up those two uh, two and a half million if there's two and a half million left Bitcoin that could really push the price up really high particularly if you know again you know big firms or high net worth individuals decide they really need to own some Bitcoin uh, and again then the retail jumps in and all the rest of it who knows what the price could be you know you know pie in the sky stuff it could go to you know half a million dollars uh, this cycle I, I don't think that's what's going to happen but it's not out of the realms we need to keep that in mind I don't think it has any chance of going to a million dollars this cycle I think a million dollars in maybe 10 years time is definitely a possibility uh, again I'm not saying it will I think it's a possibility but I definitely see Bitcoin going to at least kind of 75 85 thousand as a bare minimum peak high this cycle but again I could be wrong there's people saying that they don't think it'll go over 50,000 so you know time will tell it's peak low uh, after the coronavirus was you know sort of 4,000 ish I think 3,800 so if you 10 exit from there then that only gets you to sort of 38,000 so you know then you go to 60 something thousand or let's round it off to 70,000 then it becomes you know that's a 20x from there so yeah it's hard to know uh, based on previous cycles uh, you know a lot of people are saying that yeah maybe a hundred thousand is a roundabout right and then depending who you're listening to on Twitter and uh, you know YouTube and all the rest of it some people are saying it could you know could go up to you know like a hundred and fifty thousand some are saying it could go to two hundred thousand and then again you know some are saying it could go even higher no one's gonna know until it actually happens uh, it is all just uh, people's guesses and again I, I've got no idea what the peak high will be I just think the minimum peak high is probably going to be somewhere between 75 and 85 thousand I think that uh, should easily be done in this hot cycle uh, how much higher it could go I don't know uh, I think the you know it's possible although I think it's unlikely that maybe it doesn't go much over 50,000 maybe you know I've heard some people say they don't think it'll go over 55,000 this cycle and that's definitely a possibility I, I would agree with that it's possible I just think it's unlikely I'm thinking more the 70 eighty thousand dollar mark is probably going to be the lowest high that it could form who knows time will tell let me know your thoughts down below what do you think uh, is the maximum uh, figure Bitcoin could go to in this bull cycle and what do you think the minimum figure Bitcoin could go to uh, in this cycle is I'd love to know your thoughts also hit that like button down below I'd really appreciate that helps my videos get out there and get seen hit subscribe if you like my material I put out daily material uh, and when there's you know plenty of news I've got a lot more to say and when there's not so much news we generally just kind of have a look at the charts and again for me I don't use a whole lot of indicators and things like that it just gets too confusing I just simply look at the trend and I look at the price the trend and the price generally give me enough uh, indicators of where it's going in the sort of short to midterm I don't day trade uh, I don't leverage trade I do swing trade a little bit from time to time but even that's you know fraught with danger I've got you know I've bought some things in the last few months that I thought were going to do really well and look they tanked and they went completely the opposite way so I've definitely got trades that have lost me money and up to 40 50 percent I think my worst one was about 48 percent it was down uh, at the moment I think my worst one is around about sort of 36 percent at the moment but again I'd, ha I'd have to have a look so I've definitely got some losses in there and I'm not going to get on here and tell you that all my trades work out and I'm you know killing it and you know and I know everything I definitely don't I have a good knowledge my overall portfolio is definitely up uh, well and truly up but I definitely have some uh, f you know reasonable losses within there uh, you know if everything uh, was up and performing as well as my best performer uh, God I'd hate to think how much I would have uh, I, I would, uh, yeah I couldn't even add it up it'd be too hard but overall I'm up and I think you know in this kind of market most people should generally be up it, it, it's a bull market it's not that hard to be up it is harder to keep it though that's the hard part knowing you know what to invest in 
and knowing when to, you know, not completely cash out, although there's probably, there's definitely going to be ones in there that you'll want to cash completely out of, but also which ones to hold. Um, you know, good projects, they're going to go up and down. You're not going to be able to pick the cycles and you're not going to be able to always know exactly which ones are literally going to go to the moon and you might have sold out too early and things like that. That is the harder part. That's, you know, that's the game that we're all trying to play to know what's good, what's going to last a really long time and, you know, how much of it to sell and when to sell it. <laughs> you know, the ultimate traders are, you know, markers. That's what we're looking for, you know, our indicators. If we, if we can get all of that exactly right, unlikely, or at least to get most of those right and as close to those uh, sort of, you know, marks as we can. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train at the moment. It's looking pretty promising right about now. And I'll see you next time.